Hey what's up guys, OSG here and today I'll be looking at C64 games that were so bad you actually had to play them to believe they were commercially released at all. Most of the videos on my channel are based around games that you should play, but here we have a true creme de la crap selection that if anyone bought them they would have been crying the moment they loaded them up. I've tried to get games that lots of people may have bought and not just Lemon 64's low scoring games and I've cross matched them against Zap 64 as well which is why I've took so long for this video. Some of these games were budget which were like £2 back in the day which roughly works out at around £5 in today's money which to be fair is what we will pay for most indie games but being cheap doesn't in my eyes give the publishers the right to churn out some of the shite we are about to see. But wait, we don't just have cheap games we also have full price games too and these were the ones that hit us the hardest. Anyway, enough talking crap, let's look at some crap with the 20 worst Commodore 64 games in order of crapness. Kicking us off in 20th place we have Cobra. Ok so this was a game based on the Sly Stallone movie who at the time was one of the hottest action stars in Hollywood. I'm sure that a lot of you like me will have rushed out to buy this garbage on the strength of the movie even though the movie wasn't the greatest either. Anyway all we got for our money was a truly frustrating platform shooter that actually looked ok and sounded great but as we all know gameplay is king and the gameplay on this game is truly pants. Next up in 19th we have Karnov. Karnov was a real love-hate game in the arcades. I personally love the arcade game as it holds so much nostalgia for me as it was in my local arcade. However, the home port on the C64 was nothing short of scandalous as they took the specky port, which I have to say was terrible anyway, and made it even worse. This could have and should have been much better, but as with a lot of arcade ports, this was obviously rushed out for maximum profits without a thought for the poor kids who like me bought this shite. Shame on you, Activision. Artura is in 18th place. This has to be one of the biggest messes of a game I've ever played. The whole thing is just abysmal as you try to make out what's happening on the screen. Your character seems to float through the platforms. I remember seeing screens for this and thinking it doesn't look that bad, but my god this is one that has to be played to see how bad it is. Even Ben Daglish must have given up on the soundtrack as it's below his normal awesome stuff. And this was a full price game by a big software house in Gremlin. Pfft, what a pile of crap. In 17th place we have Crazy Paven by Top 10. Top 10 of what? Rubbish games? So, in this game you have to control Howard the robot, who looks nothing like a robot, as he lays some stones in a garden that looks like the owner has got sick of gardening and tarmacked the whole thing. And yeah, that's it. Even for $1.99 it's a totally boring, uninspired game that was only good for covering the tape holes up and recording over. Sixteenth place is taken by Sky Twice. Released in 1987 by American Action this is a no stop avoider fun which to be honest is my kind of game when done right but this one isn't. The graphics I have to say aren't bad and at first neither is the music but it quickly starts to grate on you. The gameplay however is terrible and for a full price game this is truly atrocious. If you do ever manage to master it as well the whole thing can be completed in under 6 minutes which makes value for money for this game zero. Trigger Happy is in 15th position. Now being a shooting up fan I was sure that I would at least find some redeeming feature about this game, but sadly no. I mean what's the point in this whole game? The main sprite looks like you're flying some kind of mobility scooter that is shown on a side on perspective, whilst the background is shown in Eurydium's top down style. It's also slow and jerky and maybe the worst shooter I've ever played on the C64. In 14th place we have One Bite Too Deep. This is a horror arcade adventure game that even makes Friday the 13th look good. It's another game that you seems to have no point as you aimlessly wander around basically doing nothing and getting stuck in the background that looks terrible and the sound is atrocious too. If this had been a $1.99 budget game maybe, just maybe, it could have been forgiven for its flaws but it's £7.95 it's a complete piss take.
13th place is taken by Groovy Garden. As we go through this list I'm getting more and more perplexed as to how these games ever got released and in Groovy Garden we got maybe the most amateur game on the list. Oh, maybe not, you'll see that in first place. It's a straightforward Space Invader Galaxian type game but with vegetables as the enemies as you try to protect the Manic Miner Sprite ripoff who is trying to mow the grass. Ok, that says it all, this game should be avoided like the plague. Strike is in 12th position. Ok so we got a few bowling games on the C64. Some great games like 10th frame and some not so great ones but Strike definitely takes the award for the worst. It's not down to the graphics either as these actually look quite nice. It's down to the overall gameplay as this just has none. It's so difficult to actually bowl on this game and when you do it's so unrealistic and the whole game just feels nothing like a bowling game. In 11th place we have Gaza Super Soccer. Out of all the football games that I've played on the C64 this one is the one that left a real bitter taste in my mouth. As being from the North East Paul Gascoigne was a local hero and I used to want everything that he put his name to. Then I bought this and my estimations of Paul went down. I mean what kind of idiot thinks that changing the pitch view during the game is a good thing. And then there's the gameplay in general which is non-existent. This is just another example of companies cashing in on kids stupidity for worshipping a football idol. 10th place is taken by Highlander. This game is renowned for being one of the worst movie tie-in games on the C64 and it had to have a place on this list. The game is a one-on-one -on -one fighter that has no skill involved as you just aimlessly press buttons and directions until you or your opponent dies. It truly is a pile of shit and the only redeeming thing about it is the Queen theme tune by Martin Galloway. Dick Tracy is in 9th position. Titus really took the piss with this one. It's got to be one of the least finished games I've ever seen come to the shelves. The screens on the back of the box are from the Amiga, as if they had shown these dog shit graphics then no kid would have bought it. It's so bad you can't even see your bullets. Anyway, if you like Dick Tracy then defo stay away from this and go and play the Mega Drive version instead. Oh I forgot to say, this is the most expensive game on the list coming in at $10.99 on tape and a staggering $15.99 on disc which is criminal. In 8th place we have Lee Enfield's Tournament of Death. Well death is what you'll be praying for if you play this game. Straight from me off the game is hopeless and for some reason the coders thought that not actually using the full screen was a good idea. No, let's use a stamp sized playing area that is offset in front of some spectrum type backdrop pictures. Recipe for success? Not. Playing area side though, this game is still terrible as the gameplay is near impossible to actually do anything and it's a full price game too. Seventh place is taken by Hard Driving. Come on, we all knew this game would be on. For me, the most surprising thing is that it's not top, as it's a complete mess. I know that many people have said that the port Hard Driving to the C64 was just a little too ambitious, but why? Remember, we had 3D games like Stunt Car Racer, which were brilliant, but this one, pfft, it's like playing a flip book, as the frame rate is so slow. If you speed up the emulator, though, it becomes somewhat playable, but sadly, that wasn't an option back in the day. Bionic Granny is in 6th position. This game actually just deserves to be on the list for its name alone. Then you play the game and realise that the gameplay and graphics and sound are even worse than the name. It's a budget title coming in at $2.99 but I personally think that that's £2.98 too much for his garbage. The funny thing is that I'm sure I bought this as a kid, probably just recorded over it though. Fifth 
Fifth place is taken by Striker. Maybe the worst football management game I've ever seen, and I've seen a lot, as it's a genre I love growing up. There's nothing exciting about this game at all. Even the action scenes that you're in charge of can't save this tripe. Obviously, we had footy management games in abundance on the C64, so most of us will have been lucky enough never to ever have played this crap. In 4th place we have Jet Strike Mission. This is a mid-level price game costing $4.95 on release. It's a flight sim wannabe without the great technical coding that C64 flight games had to give us that sense we were flying on an 8-bit system, which isn't an easy task and very few pulled off to be honest. This falls into the didn't pull it off category though, and we got a game that even the developers called it in, can you take any more of this torture when you died, which was just about every time you took off. Robo Bolt is in third position. Now at first glance you get Paradroid vibes from this game, but that's where the similarities end, and you are thrown into what can only be described as a waste of your dwindling life as you wander through a game that seems to have no reason whatsoever. It's, I really just don't get it. Surely someone at the company asked the question, why is this so shit before it was released? In second place we have the further adventures of Alice in Video Land. My god, this is bad. Straight from the off, the backgrounds in this game look like they're designed straight from the Anana stair carpet that she's had down since the 60s because it's still got life in it. And then there's the speech. I mean if anyone knows what's been said here, feel free to let me know. But even all that doesn't top off how bad the gameplay is. I mean what the actual hell were they thinking when they put this on a tape and sent it out to the shops? Nightmare. And now, in first place, we have the creme de la crap, known as the A-Team. Any self-respecting kid from the 80s loved the A-Team. I remember coming in from playing out to watch it every time it was on, as it was such a great show. It's only natural that the game would be part of the home systems, as it was a surefire winner as far as sales would go, right? Well, no, and thank god I never heard about this game when I was a kid, because I'd have bought it in a heartbeat. The thing is, the Specky and Amstrad got a different, okayish version, but we got this. I mean, who in god's name gave a license out of this company, and why did they think it was okay to brand it as an official A-Team game? Whoever is responsible for this decision should be hung, drawn and quartered, as this is a utter dog shit of a game. Ok that's it for this video, I'd like to say if it's been fun getting the footage but really it hasn't. It has been fun reading through the reviews in Lemon and Zap64 though, so not all is lost. Let me know in the comments below if you had the misfortune of parting with cash for any of these games, and if I've missed any that really could have made the list. Please remember to like this video and subscribe to my channel for more great retro content. Oh, and if you would like to support the channel on Patreon like these quality people going up the screen right now, get on over to my Patreon channel where you can get perks like your name in the end credits, video requests and more in the future. Till next time, this is OSG, signing out.